perhaps the most kind of unique and disruptive point of 5G uh, is, first of all, for the first time, bringing um, uh, acting as an umbrella and bringing multiple technologies together uh, and the interoperability of all these multiple technologies of being wireless, wired, fiber-based, ethernet-based. Uh, um, together is an important aspect uh, and so we can exploit lots of uh, more available resources uh, but also the fact that um, most of the, the kind of the idea of um, uh, is to bring uh, most of the protocol into software and so that would allow a little bit more fluidity in the network uh, and enable technologies such as for example edge computing uh, that can bring drastically the end-to-end uh, -end delay of the network um, to uh, a much lower, basically, value of delay uh, and latency uh, that users experience. Uh, and so there are th these changes basically uh, bring a new plethora of applications. And those applications are things that haven't been possible before because of either lack of available capacity, which this convergence would help, uh, to address uh, lack of uh, you know sh small latency which then this uh, fluidity of the network and technologies such as edge computing would uh, help us to achieve part of this argument uh, could be based on the idea that okay there's a larger pipe now because we have higher capacity not only because we have different technologies but also even on the 5g wireless access uh, we have um, higher capacity and this larger pipe of course would bring uh, advantages uh, but the main uh, innovation is, is much beyond having just a larger pipe it's, it's about um, basically those um, building blocks of, of the new protocol that allow for this lower latency so of course part of the lower latency comes from not only the fatter pipe but also the new radio access technologies that are being designed in the, in the 5G protocol but also a lot of it, especially in long distance communication, come from um, fluidity of the network. So softwareized network, network virtualization, enabled technologies such as I would emphasize like edge cloud, which um, have potential, potential for really uh, revolutionizing the way that the network protocol works. And so bringing the latency to much smaller values than we ever expected. Um, there are some major, um, shifts and changes that we can um, foresee with the 5G in healthcare and uh, some of them on uh, let's say on lighter uh, cases like um, mobile um, health apps um, and are um, cases that we have already started experiencing them with 4G and with the widespread of uh, mobile broadband uh, and, and of course this aspect of mobile broadband in it is very important because that's for the first time uh, make it possible for everybody to have access to broadband no matter where lo in which location they are um, and they have an easy access to broadband so this huge barrier of being able to work with a complicated operating system of a computer is also uh, set aside in every age range and in any diversity people um, use mobile broadband uh, and this will be escalated up to, to a much uh, more complex um, use cases uh, or have the potential to, to get to more, much more complex use cases with 5G because of the additional latency and reliability. Cases that we have explored, for example, uh, are uh, telesurgery when, where um, um, a surgeon would have uh, the potential to run an operation, run a robotic operation on a patient in long distance. Uh, or in a much uh, more ideal case, supervise a surgery in a long distance, um, uh, equally to train junior uh, or less expert surgeons um, in, in, an, in a kind of like mock operation uh, through long distance uh, robotic surgery operation and through real-time communication between um, um, a surgeon and um, a remotely located uh, robotic device, basically. When I say long distance, of course, the distance uh, is in fact a limitation because uh, we are talking about uh, the delay between the two points and that delay uh, is not only affected by the protocols but also affected by the distance. However, um, it's not necessarily a one figure that I can provide and say this is the distance that is the absolute uh, boundary because with the with the type of with the fluid network and with the type of um, um, technologies such as edge computing that I was referring to earlier, uh, it is possible to break down the long distance to shorter distances in terms of the communication aspects um, of the devices. Of course, there's no unique number that I can provide. However, um, 
based on the speed of light, going beyond a certain distance in a point-to-point -point communication won't be possible. The other case that we have explored was uh, basically running diagnosis on a patient in an ambulance and that's um, I mean, extremely important and interesting um, for the um, health community in particular because um, a patient, I mean that's it's the first point of contact with a patient uh, in emergency cases is the ambulance uh, and uh, running a diagnosis before taking the patient to the hospital saves a lot of time, potentially saves a lot of life and saves a lot of management resources on the um, um, hospital case. So uh, there's a potential to um, run diagnosis um, remotely from the hospital in the ambulance on the patients and identify um, where and how basically this patient should be treated um, when they arrive to the, um, to the um, hospital. Um, there are alternative cases that could be explored by the potential of running diagnosis on the hospital and that's basically providing hospital on the move uh, to uh, remote locations. So if uh, people live in a, uh, smaller villages outside the main city in more isolated locations where there is no major hospital around, a hospital could come to their doorstep instead of them going to a hospital basically through a, a hospital on the wheel or a hospital on the move, um, which is the ambulance in this case. Um, so interaction of a doctor from, from the hospital with the ambulance uh, is in terms of, uh, is in the form of um, a video streaming, for example, uh, from the patient from the, uh, and the environment of the hospital to the doctor. Uh, the um, various diagnostic devices could be directly controlled by the, uh, by the doctor. A case that we, uh, we explored and we ran a, a proof of concept on that, for example, was an ultrasound uh, device, which is um, um, directly controlled by a doctor uh, in the hospital. Uh, and then the image of the ultrasound is being streamed in real time back uh, to the doctor so that the diagnosis could be done um, on the spot and in real time, basically.